What are natural moisturizing factors and why are they in my moisturizer? Well, hey guys, y'all know it's coming up on that time of the year where we are all a lot more prone to dry skin as the ambient humidity drops Well, our skin is more prone to losing water. And that can lead to a whole host of issues, not just dry skin, but irritation, flares of acne. For patients who have eczema, whether it be atopic dermatitis or seborrheic dermatitis, their conditions can often flare in the colder months months, and a lot of that may be related to changes in moisture content in the topmost layers of the skin. When we're talking about our skin as an organ system, you cannot dismiss the fact that it basically protects us from the outside world. It keeps irritating and infectious stuff out, and it keeps water in. But the way it does that is through the dynamic barrier, the outermost layer of the skin. Think of it as a brick wall, where the bricks are corneocytes, which are basically little hard shells that formerly were cells in the epidermis called keratinocytes. Those little corneocytes are stuck together in this glue of lipids, kind of like the mortar between bricks and a wall. The name of the game is water, moisture content. When the moisture content in that outermost layer drops, that's when things go awry. They go awry, the skin cells do not mature properly, they don't turn over regularly, so you get a buildup of dry, dull, rough skin. When the moisture content is adequate, when it's teed up, guess what process happens a lot more efficiently? Exfoliating, the natural exfoliating mechanisms of your skin, it's turnover, it's dynamic processes, they require water. The enzymes in the topmost layer of the skin, in order for them to act and do what they do, they need water. Your skin has several mechanisms and strategies in place to keep the water content up there teed up and optimal. And of course, those things can go awry in different situations and scenarios. But one of the key factors that goes into maintaining the moisture content of the topmost layers of the skin is something called natural moisturizing factors. These are substances that your body naturally produces and are in the skin to hold on to water. They play a pivotal role in maintenance of stratum corneum hydration, that's that outermost layer, and they also are essential for the optimal functioning of these different enzymes that are important for the epidermis to basically function and turn over as a dynamic structure for protecting you from the outside world. There are several different types of natural moisturizing factors in the skin. The most abundant, constituting about 40 to 50% of natural moisturizing factors, is actually just amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, but they can exist by themselves, and they do so in the skin, they bind to water. These include things like arginine, histidine. The second most abundant natural moisturizing factor for hydrating up and maintaining water content in the stratum corneum is something called prolidine carboxylic acid. Roughly 12% of natural moisturizing factors are this compound, otherwise known as PCA. Then you have lactic acid, which we have talked about on this channel quite a bit actually, but lactic acid is naturally found in your skin as a natural moisturizing factor. It represents, similar to PCA, roughly 12% of natural moisturizing factors in the skin. Then below that, we have one of my all-time favorites, urea. It represents about 7% of the skin's natural moisturizing factors. In addition to that, you have salts, you have sugars, you have glycerol, and you have a variety of ions. Taken together, natural moisturizing factors, a family of hygroscopic, aka water-loving substances, maintain the moisture content in the skin. If you were to take the topmost layer of your skin, the stratum corneum, that's that protective brick and mortar wall, if you were to take that, dry it out, and weigh it, about 20 to 30% of its weight is actually gonna be the natural moisturizing factors that are there for the purpose of maintaining hydration. There are several situations out there where that is just not optimized or there are deficiencies in the natural moisturizing factors. For example, atopic dermatitis. This is a skin condition characterized by flares of itchy, red, raw, rashy, oozy skin, and later the skin can become dry and persistently itchy. 
People who have atopic dermatitis, they have a problem with the skin barrier, it's prone to losing water, and they often lack natural moisturizing factors or have inadequate levels, I should say. Cousin of atopic dermatitis, they often coincide, actually, many people have this, is keratosis pilaris. Let me know in the comments if you have keratosis pilaris. I have a lot of videos on this channel all about keratosis pilaris. But with KP, as it's called, you have a buildup of dry, rough skin, specifically around the follicle. That's what leads to those dry, rough bumps. The skin is not efficiently exfoliating and turning over there, so you get a buildup of dry skin, and it centers in that condition on the hair follicle, the pore. So you get rough and bumpy skin often on the upper arms, the thighs, you can get it on the cheeks, keratosis pilaris. But there is actually a natural decline in the levels of and production of natural moisturizing factors that comes about with age. Stratum corneum water content can also be compromised by exposures to various environmental factors, whether that be over bathing, bathing in hot water, using harsh soaps that strip away some of the natural moisturizing factors in the skin along with the protective lipids. Um, or maybe you have been sitting by a heater that dries out the skin, the air in your environment is a lot drier, so the impetus for water to leave is much greater. Utilizing moisturizers formulated with natural moisturizing factors can replenish water content in the topmost layers of the skin. And that leads to a series of events that gets the skin barrier back on track, cutting down on dryness, cutting down on irritation, and improving the overall look, smoothness, and hydration. So what are some of these natural moisturizing factors? Number one is urea. Now urea, is again, naturally present in your skin, but in moisturizers, it definitely can improve the water content of the topmost layers of the skin and rectify dry skin. When people hear the word urea, they automatically think of urine, but truthfully, urea is just naturally produced in the body. It's funny, they, they nail in on urine, but if you mention that water is in something, urine is totally left out of the conversation. Anyway, urea is naturally found in your skin, but it's also in a variety of moisturizers, and it is one of the natural moisturizing factors that has been utilized in moisturizers for probably the longest time, since like the 40s. There's a ton of research on moisturizers with urea, specifically for atopic dermatitis. Now, one of the great things about urea is that not only is it water loving to help improve the water content of the topmost layers of the skin, but depending on the concentration, it also can act as a keratolytic, which is a fancy term for basically dissolving dry, stuck together skin cells and aiding in exfoliation. So it's gonna help the exfoliation of your skin in two ways. A, by improving the water content. Remember, your skin naturally exfoliates. That all gets slowed down when the water content drops. So urea gets in there, helps improve water content. But depending on the formulation, the percentage of urea, it also can go in there and actively start exfoliating the skin. And you will derive keratolytic effects with urea at percentages greater than 10%. Some of the earliest research looking at urea moisturizers for atopic dermatitis was using these higher percentages and showed an improvement in the stratum corneum water content, a reduction in water loss from the skin, that's called transepidermal water loss, and just an overall improvement improvement of atopic dermatitis severity. Unfortunately, one of the problems that you will run into with urea-based moisturizers is that depending on the formulation, the strength, they certainly can burn and sting, especially at these higher percentages, which is a real issue, especially for patients who have atopic dermatitis. We have found over the years that moisturizers with a lower percentage of urea, like 1%, um, along with some other components, other natural moisturizing factors, which we'll talk about in a moment, along with uh, lipids and things of that sort, together can likewise improve atopic dermatitis in terms of reduction in water loss, improvement in water content, and an overall improvement in quality of life without the burning and stinging. So don't feel as though you have to go for those higher percentage strength urea moisturizers to derive the benefits um, because you can still get improvement in water content and overall skin hydration and improvement in dry skin. All right, so that's urea. It's been around a long time. I have a whole video on urea and I've got a lot of videos talking about urea as an underrated ingredient. The next ingredient I wanna talk about though is arginine. Now arginine is an amino acid. It's an amino acid, but it's also a pre 
precursor for urea. It's a precursor for urea as well as PCA, another component of the skin's natural moisturizing factors. Topical application of arginine by itself is improving the moisture content in the skin by directly binding to water, but it also helps to improve the levels of your skin's own natural moisturizing factors. There's also some evidence that arginine is anti-inflammatory, has antioxidant properties in the topmost layer of the skin, and it also helps to cut down on the irritation that people experience when using um, a class of topicals called alpha hydroxy acids, such as glycolic acid. Then you have lactic acid. Now, I have a lot of videos about lactic acid, and it is an alpha hydroxy acid. Alpha hydroxy acids are a class of ingredients. Um, you're probably familiar with glycolic acid. Then you have lactic acid, but you have a few others. So lactic acid is part of your skin's natural moisturizing factors, but topical application of lactic acid um, at low concentrations can actually help to um, break up the uh, glue, if you will, between sticky skin cells, helping them to desquamate, to exfoliate. As I've said, your skin, it naturally exfoliates on its own, but the processes, the mechanisms by which it does that, they can get slowed down with age, with underlying skin conditions. Lactic acid can step in there and help actively break up those junctions between the cells, allowing them to desquamate, which is a fancy medical term for exfoliate. Lactic acid also reduces um, the free calcium ion concentration in the skin. And because of that, that is part of what not only encourages the shedding, the desquamation, the exfoliating, but it also helps to get the skin cells in check so they behave a little bit more effectively. Um, in other words, what it does is it slows down uh, the maturation process so that the skin cells can mature more appropriately. One of the issues that people run into with dry skin, dull skin, especially as it relates to age, is that they have kind of inefficient um, maturation of the epidermis. The cells of your epidermis, that's the top part of your skin, they go through this maturation process to ultimately be in the brick wall. That's constantly turning over and the whole process of going from the bottom of the epidermis all the way to the top, the end goal for those cells is to be is to be part of the brick wall. Their ascent to becoming that can get messed up, slowed down with age, exposure to environmental aggressors. Topical lactic acid can help get that on track. The end result is an epidermis that is stronger, better barrier function, smoother skin, and because lactic acid is water loving, you also have improvement in water content in the skin. Lactic acid also has a good track record of helping to break up dry, rough skin cells that are stuck in the pore. So if you have keratosis pilaris, lactic acid is a natural moisturizing factor that when included in moisturizers can really work in your favor for breaking that stuff up and smoothing out the skin surface. Now, one thing I will point out is that you'll find skincare products that have lactic acid in them. You will also come across skincare products that have ammonium lactate. It's just a different form of lactic acid, but the benefits are there as well. Speaking of improvement and barrier function, topical application of lactic acid can also make the skin um, less susceptible to irritation from things that come in contact with it. While amino acids are the most abundant natural moisturizing factor in the skin, the second most abundant natural moisturizing factor naturally present, as the name implies, in your skin is PCA. But you will also find PCA in moisturizers and skincare products to help replenish moisture content in the skin. The last moisturizing factor I wanna talk about is glycerin. Now your skin has naturally has glycerol and glycerin is basically the same thing. Um, glycerin is super hydrating and it helps to, again, improve the water content in the skin. It is a hydrating ingredient, a humectant. Glycerin has a very good track record of safety and efficacy for improving the moisture content and reducing dry skin. Those are just some of the components that are naturally found in your skin, but you'll also encounter in moisturizers marketed as containing natural moisturizing factors. Now, that being said, there are a variety of ingredients in moisturizers that help improve the water content of the skin that aren't necessarily always natural 
naturally found there or something in this category of quote natural moisturizing factors. For example, hyaluronic acid. It's very moisturizing. It is present in your epidermis. It's mostly present in your dermis, but it is present in your epidermis. That too can help improve water content. Propylene glycol likewise can improve water content. So there are a lot of humectants, things that help improve water content. Marine extracts, right? We don't naturally have algae in our skin, but it is really good at helping us in improving moisture content when applied to our skin. So these aren't the only things out there, but I wanted to make this video to clarify what exactly natural moisturizing factors are and what they do for you and your skin naturally and what they do when they are included in moisturizers. You know, a lot of times, products are branded, they are sold to us, they are marketed in such a way, and they use a lot of language that sometimes we don't always know the backstory on, like what exactly are natural moisturizing factors? And we live in a world now where natural is heavily marketed, and so maybe you have a high index of suspicion whenever you hear the word natural that you are about to be scammed, but it is not a scam. There are natural moisturizing factors in your skin, and including those, pro those ingredients in moisturizers definitely is a logical evidence base um, in improving the water content of the skin. Are these ingredients a must have in a body moisturizer? Like, are you unable to correct to dry skin without having natural moisturizing factors in the formula? Absolutely not. Um, so don't feel as though whatever moisturizer you're using, if it's working for you and, and everything, don't feel as though you have to drop everything and go out and find one that's got these ingredients in it per se. But I just wanted to make this video to really explain what this whole sort of category of ingredients do for you. Natural moisturizing factors think of as being under the umbrella of ingredients that you would refer to as humectants, but they're kind of in a specific little, um, you know, click, if you will, and that they are naturally made in your skin and play a huge role in maintaining the water content of the stratum corneum. When it comes to barrier function, the natural exfoliating processes, keeping irritants and infectious stuff out, the name of the game is water because everything gets thrown thrown off kilter out of whack when the water content in the skin drops. All right, y'all. So that is my video today for you on natural moisturizing factors. So I really hope this video was helpful to you. Speaking of moisturizers, moisturizing the skin, on the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video reviewing some of the newer La Roche-Posay Tolarian moisturizers. So you're definitely gonna wanna check that one out next, especially if you've been curious about these for maybe your winter skincare routine. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.